Leon Pietschak and I work for an organisation within the NHS called Health Education England and our remit is to support the current and future workforce around their training and educational needs to succeed within a medical career or uh, a clinical career but also within my remit uh, as a youth development manager and we'll go into my story in this hour today but also how it can resonate within your personal statements and your journeys today is our values, behaviours and attitudes um, and not only in healthcare but across the whole aspect of who who are you and what makes you and what can you bring to any particular course, uh, apprenticeship or job in the future and that means not only your academic ability but also your whole self. What what makes you you? And we're going to talk about that in depth over the next hour. The chat box will be very important for some of this because it's a very interactive session. And as Caroline says, if you can't, um, then please look to unmute and I'm sure we can work with you to make that happen. So without further ado, we've done housekeeping. Over this next hour, we're going to go through background and context, okay, and then do you match our values in terms of health and social care? So we're really looking at you and what your values and what you represent. Then we're going to just touch on the base in relation to the values in the NHS constitution, which is something that I spoke about this morning in relation to being our six core values that we live by 365 days a year, 24 seven, as part of the health and social care workforce. Then we're going to do a bit of a values quiz. Um, and then what makes you you? And then we're going to also talk about digital footprints because it's extremely important in relation to your values, behaviours and attitudes and how we utilise our social media accounts and how we use the variety of tools in the tech world to develop us but can also hinder us. So we need to be fully aware of that as we progress forward to college or whatever educational route where you're looking at or aspiring to. Developing your profiles, so aspects in terms of this morning where there was a lot of concern around not having in-person face-to-face work experience and hopefully I relieved those pressures a little bit by highlighting that our medical schools and all our health and social care establishments are fully aware that young people and people aren't able to get in-person experiences so what else fills that void on your personal statement and does it carry as much weight which I know is a big concern to everybody on the call today and in the majority of sessions and then we'll finish off with our traditional questions and hopefully uh, throughout the hour you're going to fill that chat box up so Caroline has a busy time at the end. Okay so who am I? So just in that little picture there in terms of I from an early age collected everything I did and I know that sounds maybe a bit strange but from primary school through to secondary school into college and everything I've done um, I've collected in terms of certificates for anything that I've done anywhere I've been um, or anything in terms of skills attributes or anything that can demonstrate a journey I've kept and as you can see at the top of that picture there it says project management career sample so often what I would do is either take that to a course or career lead or also for jobs and hand them this portfolio and that's only one specific portfolio for that particular job because I'm a lot older than you and I have a bigger folder so I'm able to pull out of the folder what matches that job um, and highlights the values behaviors and attitudes that would match up to the type of person that that organization is looking for so that's just a little sample in terms of my background and we'll go through my background in the next slide but also relating to you building up your personal statements from there and then you'll also notice whilst this morning we spoke a lot about the NHS we need to remember that health and social care is a huge environment and a huge organization and we also encompass social care and primary care and all our community hubs and community bases and also in transport as well in terms of how we have mobile units that provide healthcare and the support staff that that takes. It is a huge organisation and as we said we're the fifth biggest 
employer in the world um, and it's only getting bigger uh, and we need more and more people to fulfill the variety of the 350 plus roles that we have on offer. So why have I been invited today? And it keeps jumping slides on that one. But my journey to the NHS, uh, as all yours will be, it will never, ever be a straight line. Um, and in relation to my journey, I come from a little village uh, in North Wales. For those of you in London, that's uh, a long way away. Um, and my primary school, we had 38 children. That was it. 38 children, uh, whereas obviously nowadays that's unheard of. Uh, they'd have 30 odd in a class, wouldn't they, Caroline? So from my perspective, to have 38 and then try and get a five aside team that of all the same age was pretty much impossible. So we had to create our own opportunities, develop our own games, uh, devise our own fun, if you like, in terms of what we could do with that number of individuals, because there may only have been myself and another boy actually in my class of the same age. So how do you do the variety of team games or learn to be a team player in an environment like that? And then early on in primary school, I really struggled. Uh, I wasn't enjoying primary school, and mainly because I just didn't seem to want to learn. I didn't enjoy learning. Um, and as I came towards the end of primary school, um, a lot of people were saying, has he been tested for something called dyslexia? Now, back then, dyslexia was very unheard of. It wasn't very well known. Uh, and I wasn't spelling words very correctly. And I was not a very good reader. And I didn't enjoy learning. Um, and nothing really stimulated me for education. So I left primary school with very little foundation. Um, and then that took me into secondary school not really with a very positive experience. So Caroline were talking uh, earlier about how her journey was very different from mine in secondary school. Um, I predominantly spent most of my time talking to the head teacher for the wrong reasons or best friends with the deputy head teacher for the wrong reasons. Um, and what you would class probably as isolation nowadays. Um, I was sat in a room with a number of other individuals for long periods of time over my five years, um, not learning a lot and talking a lot. Um, but as I say, you grow up fast. Um, and I found sport and I used sport as my catalyst to push me through school. And I was quite good at sport and my PE teachers. And we all need mentors or we need somebody to invest in us. And mine was an English teacher. Uh, because I love to write fantasy stories about Star Wars and all sorts of things. Spelling was awful, grammar was awful, but she saw that I had an imagination and she took hold of that and taught me how I could harness my various skills. And I'm very, very good at spinning plates. So as Caroline knows, I'm doing like sessions for you today. I'll be doing another session with someone else later. We're doing another session tomorrow. And I, I can really spin plates and maneuver around and utilize a variety of different skills. Then I somehow talked my way into college to do a sport and recreation course where I'd said that I was doing a lot of um, coaching qualifications and I just took every opportunity to do everything. But most of all, everybody was doing football uh, and I enjoyed football. I enjoyed playing football, but I, I said to the sports teacher, what other sports qualifications are out there? And he said, well, no one's really doing cricket. No one's really doing archery. No one's really doing DJing and fencing and tennis. So I said, let me do all them. So I took all those qualifications um, whilst I would go to interviews to be a sports coach. I was up against maybe 50 other sport, uh, football coaches. But I said, well, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm OK football coach, but I can do cricket dodgeball, archery, rifle shooting. And immediately I started to get employed as a sports coach that could be what's now known as a multi-sports coach because I showed the variety of skills that I could bring to that role. And also it's just a different shaped ball or a different shaped bat or racket. And you just apply the same skills. It's just a different name to a different sport. Um, and that really excelled me then. And I went around the world coaching cricket and working with young people. Um, I spent some time in Denmark as a volunteer teacher and a PE teacher. 
uh, teaching English, which was a novel thing for me because, as I say, I really struggled. Um, but they were probably on the same level as me, so we learned together and developed. Uh, and my Danish wasn't very good. So uh, we were probably on level peggings all the way through that experience. But I also worked in Turkey as well, in a very deprived area in Turkey, where I worked with young people with social and emotional issues. Uh, and at 18, 19, that was a big thing for me. Um, and to support those individuals through those difficult times enabled me to develop and grow my story. 20 years on, I've been doing working with all kinds of organisations, young people's parents and carers from across, um, well, yeah, in different places, nationally and internationally. Um, but I've always maintained that theme of working in sport and volunteering in sport. Um, I love volunteering for our local tennis club. Um, I play cricket and I, I really in, uh, encourage anybody to look at volunteering as a key opportunity to build your skills. Building up to two years ago, I never ever thought about the NHS or health and social care as a career pathway. One, because I felt that it was a, an academics place to go to work. And I also thought that it was a um, not a place where you would have a youth worker or work with young people in that way. And how wrong I've been, because in the two years of when taking this role as a youth development manager, I've had the opportunity to work with amazing, fantastic people, organisations and really support young people into future health and social care roles through mentoring and coaching and supporting and working with organisations such as Career Ready to really give you these bits of information that aren't necessarily available uh, in our classrooms or on links and things. So that's why I feel events like this are really beneficial. So I love this uh, little diagram because that diagram in the middle is often my brain. Um, I will go around here, there, everywhere. Um, and it can be a bit frustrating for people that like it in structure. <laughs> um, but I get there. I don't cost anybody a million, two million pounds unless I have that budget wish one day or, you know, I don't cause any harm. So in that way, as long as I achieve what I've set out to achieve and I make it within good time and within the deadline, then everybody's happy. And, and that's how I've worked wherever I've worked. And it works for me and it's worked for that employer and it's worked for that in organisation. Uh, and I think that's really important because it it's really important to hesitate that, uh, to, to highlight that there will be failures. You may not get the grades that you aspire to do. Um, and, you know, that's OK. It, there is a root way and I always put and there are other websites available, but we utilize. I just utilize that picture to highlight that once you're in an organization, it can take you anywhere or everywhere and anywhere. As long as you look for those opportunities and you have that passion interest and everybody on every call says how enthusiastic is Leon uh, and sometimes I think oh is that a bad thing or is that a good thing but as far as I'm concerned I have a passion for what I want to do and, and that's help each and every one of you today regardless if there's one of you or 40 of you that go on or however many more of you go on to a career in whatever sector hopefully we've played some part in just giving you a little bit of information that you didn't have before and that will aid you in being successful. Who works for the NHS? So as I said, I had that sort of preconception or a stereotype in terms of you had to have a degree, you have to be really academic, you have to be really, really um, top of your class in order for you to achieve in what you want. And there are elements of that that are true, but within health and social care and the variety of pathways nowadays, there is an opportunity for each and every one of us, regardless of your academic ability, to demonstrate how you can have a full and effective and a successful career in health and social care. And we have fantastic people from around the world working in health and social care. And diversity is the spice of life and it brings our workforce together and enables us to learn from one another and develop those core skills that you've heard to death in school and college about have you demonstrated teamwork? 
do you understand the different ways in? What are transferable skills? What's Leon on about about transferable skills? Well, it's about just being adaptable. And you'll hear about, oh, can he adapt or can she adapt to change? Well, it's all about how you take that in your stride, adjust yourself, take that deep breath and look at yourself in terms of how you can cope in different situations. We spoke this morning from you may be sat around bored to a patient coming in with a gunshot wound and you know you have to go from zero to 100 but also operate in slow motion to ensure that you follow all those procedures and ensure that that patient's care is monitored and supported and that goes for every one of our roles because although I'm not patient facing I am seven steps away from that patient you so I need to be able to understand what role I play in that and that comes from the motto where we say we recruit for values and we train for skills so we would develop you and I have constant emails every day would you like to do this course would you like to do this training would you like to be mentored would you like to be coached that can be quite overwhelming for somebody that hasn't really been that academic um, and I struggle with that sometimes to ask for help. But the key message for me in working with yourselves is that health and social care needs you and we need to demonstrate how we can support you to really succeed. Because we have a lot of young people that want to aspire to be a variety of roles. But unfortunately, by the time they get to university, they've got a different perception of the role or parents, carers and guardians have wanted them to do that particular job. And it might not necessarily align with your values, behaviours and attitudes. And that's really difficult to go back to your parents and say, well, you know what? I would rather be this than what you want me to be. Um, and that's a really difficult conversation for anybody to have. But we also see within our first years of uh, our courses, a lot of young people decide that that course is not for them. So the likes of Career Ready are really working with you to ensure that you are on the right educational pathway and that it is right for you. And also, it's OK if it's not right for you. And what is the next steps for you? Because there is always another route. When I talk about do you match our values, um, I mentioned this morning our health careers website, but also Again, I'll put these links into the chat box as we go along. But if you wanted to explore a variety of roles in health and social care, the likes of our healthcare assistant reception, back office, as they say, um, or estates. I don't, in terms of back office, it's just non-clinical for me, really. Um, but in that in that line, and what you would do, you go through scenarios and you answer core questions about those values. Um, and you would see where you would score and it gives you a report. Um, they are very useful also to show to your mentors or add into your personal statements as to the learning and that you aspire to try a different way of learning as well. And it really gives you a, an insight into their roles and how values play a part in each and every one of our roles. Spoke about this this morning, but I'm conscious a number of you um, are or weren't able to make it this morning, but we are all underpinned in the health and social care under these six core values for the NHS, which is working together for patients, respect and dignity, commitment to the quality of care, compassion, improving lives, and everyone counts. And then when we're looking at working together for patients, it's looking about that teamwork across the NHS makes life better for the people we serve. That respect and dignity it's the quality and not the qualification to be able to treat other patients with respect and then the commitment whatever nhs or whatever health and social care career you choose we want people with high standards compassion we want people who really care to come and work for us it's a big step and it has to be a special person in whatever role you're going to aspire to be you need to really think is this role for me improving lives then you know as i said i'm not patient facing but everything i do and hopefully you are our future workforce so i'm improving lives by encouraging and hopefully recruiting you to think about being part of our health and social care family so i'm improving your life 
and I'll be improving everybody else's life as you go forward for your journey and be successful in health and social care. And then at the point of contact, the NHS is free to everyone. And that is really underpinned by everyone counts. And we treat each and every person working and volunteering in health and social care is making a difference and helping people whatever career they're in. OK, so this is where we're going to do a little bit of chat box. Um, there may be some unmuting as well, Caroline, if, if you can manage that, we'll see what we might not have a football match and everybody shouting out, but um, we'll see how it goes. But just looking at that picture to there, and I've given you the sort of headings and I did zip through the sort of little bit. I'll just go back one just to sort of give you that little aspect there in terms of some key words that you can look at um, and just digest. And then we'll go back to that one. And then you've got compassion, improving lives, everyone counts, respect and dignity, working together for patients and commitment to quality of care. Could you in the chat box now just give me an idea which of those six that picture would represent for you? It's not a test, it's just a quiz. So can you see those, William? I can, yes, Caroline, I have a... I've even, yeah, I'm again, multitasking today. And now I've got the, <laughs> I can see me, you. <laughs> Brilliant, everyone counts, everyone counts. Very popular one, okay. Everyone counts, respect and dignity, playing your odds there, Oliver, right, okay. Okay, so that's, that's good. Okay, shall I, so, not sure if I click, that gives you the answer, let's have a look. Could it be all of them? Well, that is a very good question, Caroline. Yes, it could be. But uh, that particular picture, you are right. No one's wrong. Um, but I kind of said that before we do the rest of the quiz. <laughs> but, you know, in terms of that demonstrating the diversity in the workforce and that we are, at the end of the day, all seven steps or one step away from a patient. So we're all working together for that quality of care for that patient and their family. And that's all about whether it's clinical or non-clinical. OK, next one. Go on, you're all really good at this now. So fill in the chat box as to this one. Caroline, you can't cheat and said, could it be all of them? Worth a Worth try. A try. <laughs> Come on, I want, I want the first person to be the winner here. Respect and dignity, OK? Commitment to quality of care, improving lives. Getting faster. Some fast typers here. Compassion, improving lives. Compassion again. As I say, if anybody's brave enough to unmute, I'll take that today. Because I've only had uh, two unmuters in the whole of the year, Caroline. So, <laughs> all of them. That's not you again, Caroline, is it? No, that isn't yeah. me this time. <laughs> is that Fazir? Fazir's put a hand up. Probably pronounced your name wrong. I apologise. It, it, it's Pfizer. Uh, sorry, Pfizer. Sorry. Hello, can you hear me? Oh, yes, Pfizer, we can hear you. Yes, um, I think this represents compassion, respect and dignity for sure. It does show the teamwork because they're, they're working together for patients. You know, you can see that they're working with the patient. They're um, also uh, improving their life. As you can see, they're smiling. Uh, that's the uh, quality of the life that is being improved. Um, and uh, you can see that everybody counts because that's a nurse and that's another healthcare professional within the healthcare um, setting. And uh, the commitment to quality of care, I'm sure it's not the best of the experience to every day uh, try to do this, but uh, she's committed to do it uh, because it would improve the life of that patient. You're completely right. My father at the moment is in hospital um, and he had a filling in his lung uh, and he's 89 years of age. Um, and yesterday it was like sitting next to a wasp. Uh, he was very angry. He's been in hospital for two weeks. Uh, he doesn't like the food there. <laughs> uh, and he is a very demanding patient. And whilst I was sat there in the 20 minutes of me sitting next to my father, you know, there's another six people in that room, all asking and all vying in very hot conditions under PPE equipment and really showing each and every one of these values. Uh, and I just kept shouting out, you're just all angels, you're all, just all earth angels and you're all amazing at what you're doing, you know, because they're so patient <laughs> and every one of these values and you don't really get an opportunity until you sit back and maybe do 
uh, you know, because we always go into hospital for something wrong. <laughs> uh, it's either obviously you're not well or you've broken something or unfortunately someone is dying. So there are the key experiences that we often find. But no, you, you've hit the nail on the head uh, in, rela in relation to that. And that's kind of partly obviously why we're highlighting within this quiz. And like you said, you've quite rightly pointed out each and every one of those values within that one. OK, what about this one? So we're going to hit the nail on the head on this one. So I just want the one answer. Oh, people are thinking more wisely about this one now. Caroline, what do you think? I, my initial one was working together for patients. Any other changes? Commitment to quality of care, OK. Working together with patients, brilliant, OK. There's only a couple more. Commitment to quality of care. OK. Yeah, so was that Julia? Well done, Julia. Sure as well, well done, brilliant. <coughs> Excuse me while I grab some water. Thank you. OK, so next one. What do we think this one is? Yeah, I think a few of you now have caught on to the kind of the uh, the trail and as I say the list is kind of uh, diminishing as we go. Uh, so I won't put, I won't keep you too long on that one. Brilliant. Well done. OK. And you've all got the idea now, so you've all learning the six key values. So if you've done it in a process, which I said I'm not very good at, you'll probably get the answer to the next one. Or is that a cryptic clue? That's <laughs> not. Improving lives, yeah, definitely. Yeah, well done, brilliant. Excellent, OK. And then the last one, you can all just hammer the uh, chat box on this one because you'll all get this right. By process of elimination, and if anybody were there this morning, yeah, that's my son's favourite one. Everyone counts, <coughs> and I'm losing my voice, <laughs> which is not good. On another half an hour to go, but I will get it back. Brilliant. OK, so hopefully that gave you a real insight into those six core values. But if you were to get a placement in any one of our organisations, they will also have their own organisational values as well. So whilst you're living to the overall NHS values in that respect, regard and whether it be social care, primary care, or an, an acute trust, they will have their own values as well that they would see at that local level as what they were aspiring to meet as well. And then that brings us nicely into what is values based recruitment? So as I highlighted this morning and sort of mentioned earlier in the last half an hour, is that we are a values based recruitment and while qualifications are very important and your maths and your science are key and then also sciences depending on the role that you're looking for or the future educational aspects but each and every one of your subjects carries weight and matter and also tells us a lot about you and who you are and what you enjoy doing which is very very important because you don't want to be in a job that you don't like because one you won't like it and the experience of the people around you won't enjoy it either so the whole point of why we look at these particular ways of recruiting is to look at how we align our organization values and your values together so that we have the right person for the right role at the right time and as i've said there in that current theme of recruiting for values and training for skills at any time, you know, I was talking to a nurse last week. She's second year into her nursing um, course. She still hasn't passed her maths um, and she's it's like a driving test for her. I think she's on her fifth time, but it hasn't stopped her in the two years of doing nursing that she's passed every single one of the observation tests or anything else to do with nursing. She's passed, but maths is just a slight struggle. But she will she will achieve it and she will aspire to be a fantastic nurse because her values just speak volumes. So whilst qualifications are important, it is that rounded person that we're looking for. OK, 
So let's have a little look at maybe a certain individual that may have not thought about how to present themselves uh, at an interview stage. So sorry about those that may have had some uh, sound issues there. I will put the, uh, I'll give the link to Caroline to send out if you missed that. But basically just <laughs> in relation to that video, for those of you that did hear it, um, was probably not how you want to present yourself at an interview, but also it happens at meetings as well. Uh, only yesterday we were at a particular meeting and one of the meeting leads had taken the information off Google um, and challenged a particular lead because the lead said that a particular role didn't fit in a particular box and she uh, referred to said, well, Google said, <laughs> um, up against the lead of the person that was running that, maybe not necessarily the best way you want to present yourself. So. Don't always believe what you read online uh, and always do your fact checking, definitely, especially if you're going to lead the meeting <laughs> from that side. So what makes you you? Um, and for me, the six things that I bring to work every day is the aspect of that I can inspire somebody, I can motivate somebody, I can improve myself and others. I always want to be positive in whatever situation and whatever way that I can be focus where possible which is probably my biggest struggle uh, and be creative um, and really look at ways to bring out those messages to everybody that i speak to or ways that we can encourage more and more people to look at health and social care and that is aspect around our health careers website and so forth they have a lot of resources that market out there for a variety of different people to look at health and social care but also what are you doing in your local community? What have you been doing in your school or college? What do you do at home? Um, 
makes you you, but also supports the people in in your community or home around you. And these are really important attributes to look at and build in. And whilst you haven't got pages and pages of opportunity to sell yourself on a personal statement or application form, these are key aspects that we look for in an application form to see how you meet those six core values and bring out those values. It may be that you open a door for a teacher. It may be that you've listened to your best friend when they've fallen out with somebody or broken up with somebody or having a struggle of their own. You don't need to be a mentor or a coach for that. You are a friend, you are a support mechanism and you can highlight that. You may have been part of a social mobility action group or done some surveys or built something. It could be anything that adds value to your journey. And that's really important. And it's really important to demonstrate that alongside your qualifications. For me, I look at when I have a mentor or a mentee, sorry, and a mentor, what type of aspects makes that person up? So do you have any pets in the house or do your friends have any pets or anything that you could relate to? Maybe you go for a walk on the weekend with your friend and their pet. You know, your friendship groups, have you helped bond the friendship or in terms of strengthening a friendship group or are you heading up a WhatsApp group or a another social media aspects? Do you take part in any sports or activities? What are you reading at the moment? You know, um, do you have a part time job, you know, and really value that part time job? It might not be fun stacking shelves, but it demonstrates that you're punctual on time. It demonstrates that you're committed to something or an organization. It also teaches you structure, which, as I said, I struggle with. And it also gives you that opportunity to look at an infrastructure of an organization, how they do what they do. And then you can bring that to an interview or bring that into your personal statement. Podcasts. Do you listen to podcasts? You know, in over the last 12 months, it has been impossible to get virtual, sorry, uh, um, in-person work experience. So these are all adding up into ways that you can build up your personal statements. And as I said this morning, I helped my mentee get two job interviews and get two job offers just by through demonstrating that she had a rescue cat as an example. And I know speaking to our local trusts, if they see that particular young people have worked at any type of fast food restaurant or restaurants or any customer services roles, they are already scoring high because they have that teamwork ethic they have that commitment to care and patience and understanding and would fit in a high pressured environment such as health and social care at times some top tips and i'm conscious that you're from london but just regardless of whether it's greater manchester these top tips always interlink with me when i'm looking at application forms or writing application forms because when i look at the apprenticeships that young people are applying for or people applying for they never really apply a lot of this thinking to their application form and you never really sell yourselves as much as you like you often say well i was a part of the school team of what? What what were you the part of? What did you what position did you play? What did that do for you in terms of what have you learned by being whatever you've been? Um, and you know, was it an individual sport or was it a team sport? Was it a team activity that you took part in in college or school? These are really important things for the reader to read about because it tells us that you are already having bits of experience that will match the course or the workspace or the future job. Right, hopefully that people can hear. Let me know, Caroline, if they can't.
as a manager, um, and I'm not alone here, and years ago when I used to do a lot of uh, online safety courses, and that, that video is very old, but still very appropriate, in that what does your digital footprint say about you? And also, when I'm recruiting, probably it used to be it was 96% when I used to do these courses about uh, four years ago, and now most managers I speak to will have a look at your digital footprint before they either look at you for the course or for uh, recruitment purposes, just to ascertain what type of individual you are outside of an interview environment. And you might say, well, that's a bit strange. But again, as mirrored there, if you have a public account and you're out there for everybody to see, then obviously you need to present yourself in the best possible way and demonstrate to everybody that you meet those values. And especially from that employer's perspective, that they are employing the right person for the right job and the right reasons and also has the right value set. So I would urge you to double check your email addresses. Um, you know, we've had some very questionable email addresses when we've had people um, recruiting people and sending messages back to certain individuals is a bit uncomfortable for me because I don't necessarily want to be referring to sexy Suvi da, 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 or God knows what else is just one of many email addresses that can't repeat really um, and you know the email back to them is maybe you want to have a think about your email address and be a slightly more professional um, but on that lighter low and also you know really thinking about what you're putting out there is really important nowadays obviously with fake news and all the other associated groups you need to be really afraid with what your digital footprint says about you uh, and gone in the days of, well, a boss can't do that. Well, if it's out there, it's out there. And, you know, it's um, valuable information because everybody speaks through digital speak. Work hard and get good grades. I, I didn't work hard and I didn't get good grades. But if you don't get what you wanted, there are still several ways you can become. All right, that's an AHP professional or any type of professional that you want to be. Um, and you can obviously, like I described right at the beginning of this, is it's not a straight line. There's bumps in the roads. You'll be moving around. You might not get the grades that you wanted, but there's also an opportunity to be open and honest about that. And you can also highlight forever when I'm looking at personal statements uh, or personal person specs and I haven't got a particular thing that they've asked for. I'm say, well, I'm working towards that. Or if I was to be successful in your employment, could I work towards that with you? And it demonstrates to them that I want to work with them and I want to train with them. Uh, and a number of employers have said that was really beneficial that you highlighted that you wanted to achieve the full person spec. And we really valued that. So don't be afraid of what's on a person spec. If you feel that you don't meet it, look to meet it in different ways. And don't be scared of the person spec or the job description, even the job title, because job titles often sound a lot more um important than they are in some ways if that makes sense um so you need to be just aware that you might say you know what it says for example when i went for this job i thought it was for the, just for greater manchester and i'd done my whole presentation on greater manchester and midway through the interview they said leon you do realize this is for the whole of england and i said oh yeah it's just another region isn't it i'll just apply what i do in greater manchester and do that region by region and I got the job. <laughs> I didn't think I was going to get the job because it scared the living daylights out of me in terms of thinking that I'm going to be managing the whole of England after just being a regional uh, manager in the past. So, you know, don't be scared. Uh, there's people that will help you and support you. Digital footprint. Yeah, I think we've gone through that. And your networking and you're 17, if you're over 16, look to get yourself a LinkedIn profile. Very professional, presents yourself well. And I get a lot of my ambassadors and fantastic student ambassadors from LinkedIn to demonstrate to other students um, their journey and their not so smooth journey into either university or apprenticeships or whatever route way they're currently on. Take your time um, and I put this in for me more than anybody because I often get red penned on reports um, and I always fall back on that dyslexia aspects. But sometimes like the other day, you'll laugh, but um, a neighbour lost a pet in our garden and I had a heart attack at lunchtime uh, and it turned out to be a bearded dragon. 
I wrote in the chat box saying why I was late to a meeting. I met a breaded dragon. So you need to be aware of what you're writing and just get other people to read what you've wrote and to ensure it makes sense and it's really personable and it's not I do this and I do that and it flows in its communication so that the reader can really get a feel for the person that's coming onto the course. Utilise the tools around you. I know from this morning I've got a list that Caroline has of a variety of links and I know a lot of you have already been very proactive in finding links, but our Health Careers website has a variety of links that can help you with that and the NHS Jobs website is fantastic to tell you about the values, behaviours and attitudes and how to relate everything to that. Getting experience, well we've talked extensively about the variety of ways of experience and the variety of ways to learn and utilising your fantastic mentors and support from Career Ready. You may already have part time jobs, but there's also a lot of links here that I will put forward to Caroline that you can access if it was medical orientated. We have the fantastic um, Brighton and Sussex medical virtual work experience that you get a certificate at the end of um, that demonstrates your learning in relation to that and then our GP observe virtual medical experience as alternatives but it demonstrates to that medical school or organization that you've gone out your way to learn a course. Future Learn has lots of free courses and you don't have to be 18, 19 to go on those courses, often 16 and above, and they'll let you on the course and it's free and it's really valuable to demonstrate that, you know, oh, I, I watched a course on the NHS or the ins, ins and outs of the NHS or I've done the Duke of Edinburgh or I've been part of the National um, you know, NCS and, and, and I've volunteered in some way. It doesn't have to be health and social care. Building your profile, you know, what I spoke about this morning I, and today, I carry that book of my life around and it just has more and more pictures and more and more bits of information that I can use at any time for any job or any application in anything rather than having to search through it. I have a folder on my laptop that has all the applications that I've ever applied for, all my CV variations so that I don't have to keep recreating the wheel. Um, and it really saves time and it really helps you to home in on who you are and your personal little statement to ensure that you tell them in as least words as possible who you are and what you want to do and why you're applying. Again, from the health careers perspective, there is lots and lots of careers here and we spoke this morning um, and we didn't really get a sense of what careers you're going for this afternoon, but it doesn't really matter about the job title. It's about those values, behaviours and attitudes and how you bring your 17 years, 18 years, your 45 years on this earth onto that piece of paper and it's relevant and it meets the person specification. It must meet the person specification or the application form so that they score you and bring you through to interview. If you've not yet found a course, there's more information on these links and I've highlighted these this morning, but also here on the Health Careers website, there is a course finder and then also there's other course finders for other professions or other careers, such as the Allied Health Professions, where you could go on the I See The Difference website and that gives you a rundown of all the different Allied Health roles that are available to you. And then also from that perspective, you know, uh, tells you where the courses are in the country. NHS jobs website, regardless of whether you are ready to go into employment at this current time, I would look to register with them anyway and then um, signpost or put in what jobs you're interested in. It gives you up to date opportunities to look at job specifications and really gives you an insight into where am I going and what courses or what additional things do I need to do during my university or apprenticeship or whatever route way I do. Often I would interview year three university students and I would say what else have you done? Everybody may come out with a first, everyone may come out with a 2-1, everybody might come out with a 2-2. Two, two. What else have you done that helps you to stand out? And that is a really important question in a really difficult job market. Again have a look at the website in your local region to discover opportunities but again the opportunities don't necessarily need to be in health and social care. 
again, we can I'll give you all these links, so don't panic, but there's plenty of plenty of advice and information and in very few clicks and links as well. OK, with four minutes to spare on this one, Caroline, I know that was a whistle stop to the last 10 minutes. Hopefully you've all found that very informative. Um, I know as I described and I did say I'd be all over the place. <laughs> but I did get to questions at the end, which was what I aspired to do. Do we have any questions at this point in time or any thoughts? Please, if you want to unmic yourselves and say, Leon, that was really helpful. Or could you look at doing a session in the future with Career Ready about something else? Or could you be more specific on a particular area that you've spoken about? Um, and regardless of whether you're year 11, 12, 13, for me, you're interested in health and social care, otherwise you wouldn't be here today, or you're just finding out about it. But for me, more than anything, you have that connection with me now in terms of that professional aspect of being part of our health and social care network. So I just look forward to working with you. And whether you come into health and social care or not, I just wish you all the best of luck. Thanks, Caroline. Right, OK, so have we got any any questions in the chat box then or as Leon said if anyone's brave and want to take yourself off mute you can what about you Caroline in terms of the thoughts obviously my career journey completely different from yours what have you taken from this session I've taken I've taken from this um the NHS values just how important they are obviously it's important wherever you work to look at the values, but just how important they are. And the thing that really jumps out for me as well is it doesn't matter whether it is the, um, a cleaner, um, an electrician, a doctor, a consultant, um, physiotherapist, whatever, they're all just as important because we have this assumption, or perhaps I do, you know, well, the doctors are really important, but actually, yes, they are, but so is everybody else. Um, and that's, that. I'll take that away, that that's so important, that everybody is important within the NHS. There's no sort of... Um, if the utensils, if the utensils aren't clean, the doctor can't do their job, can they? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So that that's really important for me. Yeah, and that, that it, whatever these students apply for, that they really can show these values, and not just that they can show these values, but they actually really embrace them, and, yeah. and it, it does resonate with them. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, you know, there's lots. I know a lot of people. I say it's three o'clock. A lot of people have got to go to other things, and that's fine. And I just really hope that you've taken what you needed from this session, um, but also from a constructive criticism perspective please let me know if I've missed anything or you know there's other aspects because I'd love to work with career ready more and do more sessions like this in the future um but it's about yourselves isn't it it's about what you get out of it so it needs to be appropriate for you our superstar from the values is uh, put the hand up so speak freely uh Hi there, I just wanted to uh, thank you. Obviously, uh, me and Faisal both were going to apply for uh, medicine to become a doctor, hopefully, in the future. And these values were actually really great. We already had a, an understanding of a few of them, but a uh, few of them were not even in our thoughts. And it was great to think about that side of um, actions and those roles that we need to have and all those different values uh, that you, they, you might, it might not come to you at the first sight as a healthcare professional, but um, they're really important. Well, thank you. Thank you very much for giving, us, uh, giving that information to us, and uh, I'm sure we can talk about all of those in our Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, very important because doctors don't have a lot of time to relate to their patient. So they need those personable skills a lot quicker than nurses in some ways because the nurses have time to build or other time with that relationship with that patient. So it's really important to take that message. So thank you. And I'm glad that that really resonates with you because that is a, a key aspect that in medical school and understanding how to treat that patient is really key. Thank you. And we just had a comment from a young man there, um, not a question with the being all over the place when explaining <laughs> I am the same. So somebody can relate to you there. <laughs> <laughs> all right. OK, folks, if there's, if there's no questions, um, 
we'll 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 wrap up there but just to say thank you for joining us a big thank you to leon because he's done two sessions for us today so thank you very much leon um and for the students just a reminder there are two there will there's i think there's three final insight sessions next week there's one that bupa are delivering um next week in healthcare so that might be interesting again for all you guys and there's also an afternoon one on using excel and i'm going to be joining that not to do this role next week but i'm going to actually be joining in because there's lots i need to learn on excel so <laughs> there's that one as can, well can well. i join that one <laughs> you absolutely can leon i'm joining because um, i only know the basics and i want to improve <laughs> <laughs> right so so thank you very much um, everybody and you can um leave now if you wish and if you want to stay and ask any questions you can all right